another wasted opportunity here in Philadelphia. I'll talk about the last play. Should there have been a timeout? When should it have been called? Uh, leaving James Harden open, what was that about? And why Al Horford is encouraged? It's all right now on the Locked On Celtics podcast. Be ever ready. Recognize the city of champs. Boston, baby, we do what you can. Locked on number 18, Tatum and Brown, J team. Step back, we gon' wet that and slay teams. Of course, the Celtics, who else could it be? Screaming like KG with the Larry OB. Corral is above average, assessing the team status. Best daily pod, no cap, salary matching. Clutch like Bird to DJ, keep John on replay. Primetime, dapping up the truth on the sideline. Rain and Jays, how it started, raising banners, how we finished. Locked on Celtics pod, home of the winners. B. Hey there, welcome back to the Lockdown Celtics podcast right here on the Lockdown Podcast Network, where it's your team every day, and I'm here for you every day with a free, fresh podcast dropped directly to your device. If you're a subscriber, so hit that subscribe button on whichever app you use. Hop, hop into the YouTube channel, into the comment section. Lots of Sixers fans. I know I see you out there already, you Sixers fans. You were quiet for a couple of days, and now you're coming in hot. I know, I know. So uh, hop in the comment section. Let them know, fight it out, protect protect this show's honor. I'm John Corrales. I cover the Celtics for Boston Sports Journal. I used to play once upon a time. Today's show is brought to you by Prize Picks. Uh, if you are a first time user on Prize Picks, you can get a 100% instant deposit match up to $100 with the promo code locked on. That's prizepicks.com, promo code locked on. Uh, Boston Celtics lose this one, 116-115. In overtime later on, Al Horford was encouraged. I'll talk about Al and why he's encouraged uh, heading into game five. Uh, some of the some of the more positive things. I'll save the second segment for the James Harden shot, and, and that we'll discuss that on its own. Let's just dive into this. Let's dive into this because this is what everybody's going to be talking about, uh, what everybody already has been talking about. It's the final play. So they give up the Harden three-pointer. Right, we're in overtime. There's 18 seconds left, 16 seconds left at that point, and the Celtics decide not to call a timeout. Right, so right away, there's the big debate should the timeout have been called right away? And I'm okay with not calling the timeout right away. You have Harden on the floor, you've got Maxi on the floor, you've got bad defenders on the floor, you're down one now. All of a sudden, this is an opportunity, you've got matchups there that you can exploit. So bring the ball up and let's go. Now, I've been thinking about how this should have gone, and I have the luxury of second-guessing and, and thinking about it you know, over time. And, and I, I understand, I think, the way that play went, while I didn't have an issue with the timeout not being called right away, I think there was a point on the floor where Joe Mazzula probably should have bailed the Celtics out. This is a, a Brad Stevens thing that he he – he would let things go, and then once he saw it didn't go, the, it wasn't going the way he wanted it to, he'd call the timeout. And I think that's probably what Joe Mazzulla should have done at this point because the Celtics were just going so slow. Now you're down one. All of a sudden, I, mean, I can understand being in shock over here. Uh, you know, I'm, th- this play happened like right behind me. It's actually, I believe, over because I'm over. If you're watching on YouTube. You can see that I'm here at the Wells Fargo Center on the floor. This right here is where Jason Tatum got the ball and made this play. They got the ball over half court with 12 seconds to go. So they're jogging the ball up the floor with like 11, 10, 9. They're they're gesturing. Tatum's pointing this way. He's pointing that way. Smart's waving people. Everybody's kind of waving. And it felt kind of casual. And, you know, in the moment, I was like, all right, they're, they're just going for it. They're going to try to win the game. And that's probably not how it should have gone. They probably should have come down without calling the timeout, Harden and Maxi on the floor, Tobias Harris on the floor, Tatum loves that matchup. Find a way to attack that. And if you can't get an early bucket, then you can call a timeout and set something up, right? Probe, see if you can get the early shot. If you do get an early shot and you miss, and maybe there's five, six seconds left, 
whatever it is. You can foul, play the foul game. You got two timeouts. Use you use one at that point, or maybe you have one to set up the play. You miss, you foul, you call the timeout, you advance it, and you still give yourself two, three, four, five seconds to set up. What do you need? Did you miss and they make both free throws? Now you need a three pointer. Set up a three point play. Set up a play where you have, you know, give yourself time to to make another pass and and take a shot. Give yourself time. At the very least, instead of milking the clock down to what they did, give yourself a chance to get an offensive rebound, a little tip in something. That's where that's where I really have a problem with that last play. I, I don't have a problem with trying to exploit the matchups. I don't have a problem with letting these guys kind of, you know, work through and and execute their NBA players. They're NBA players. They're good NBA players. They should be able to execute. Problem is, as I say that, they're, they're not great at doing it. Why why they went so slow? Jason Tatum didn't give himself any time to do anything. He decided when he decided to use the Derek White pick at five seconds left that that was it. He wasn't doing anything else. He could have gotten it back back to Derek White. So let's, let's break this down and really, really, you know, Monday morning quarterback this thing. He's gener- He's he's creating this scenario. All right, waving Jalen Brown, you stay in the corner. All right, Marcus comes over to set the. No, I don't want the pick for Marcus. I want the pick from Derek White because Derek White has uh, Tobias Harris on him, and I want that. Or no, he's got Maxie on him, and I want that matchup. Well, Harris comes around, and Maxie's now it's a double team. So Tatum now should feel, I got the double team. You got options there, buddy. Pull up. Take that shot. There's a few seconds left. Pull up, take that shot. Maybe Al Horford can dive down and get the rebound. Uh, with Harris trailing so fast, Maybe he'll run you over and give you free throws. Or you say, well, Maxi has switched on me. I still feel Harris coming around. That means Derek White is wide open, which he was for like three seconds. He could have, Tatum could have simply turned around, dumped it right back here to Derek White for an open shot, which would have been a three, but he could have stepped into a two, whatever it was. He could have taken the open shot, but Tatum Tatum missed it. Tatum instead drove. It's like Tatum said, I'm making this play, and it wasn't until he got down to the baseline and said, ah, crap, I am out of options, and he floated this pass over to Marcus Smart. Now, that was with 1.5 on the clock. That pass was so, because the momentum was taking him to the baseline. That pass never had a chance to get out to Smart in time for him to catch and shoot. He almost got it off. Started off too slow. Didn't recognize the options that you had. And what's what's Jalen Brown doing in the corner? Why is Jalen Brown not involved? How about Jalen Brown come up and sit the pick? Now, I know he's got P.J. Tucker. Okay. Well, I'll tell you one thing that's not going to happen is – they're not going to double Tatum. If Jalen Brown came up, if, if you switch the, the personnel and have Derek White in the corner, he can still hold that corner. You don't need to have Jalen in the corner to hold the corner. Derek White's going to hold that corner. He's a really good shooter. And you say, well, John, I don't want I don't want PJ Tucker involved in the play. So? So what's he going to do? You're going to switch. Now you got single coverage. And if he goes with you and they switch, then Jalen can just get the get the play against Tobias Harris. If you go soon enough, you have a chance to pass it back to Jalen, and Jalen can go take Tobias Harris because he can score over Harris. Tatum's not the only one who can score over Tobias Harris. But they insist on having Jalen be the guy that spaces and holds the corner. That's that's you know Jalen didn't get a shot in the overtime. He's better than a decoy. He's more than a decoy. You know what I mean? Like that that whole play, I don't have an issue necessarily with how some of it played out. It's just I have an issue with the speed at which it played out. I had an issue with Tatum not recognizing 
what he had. I have an issue with not using Jalen Brown. And then I also have an issue with Joe Mazzula saying, you know, not, not calling the timeout at the 11 second mark where it's obvious these guys aren't going to go anytime soon. They were very, very casual about that. And this is a playoff game. It's not a regular season game. They've been given all season long the chance to figure this out on their own. And this is a situation where the coach has to step in if the figuring out part figuring out part isn't happening. So I don't have an issue with them not calling the timeout at the beginning of it. But once it's like 10 seconds or so and you say, okay, the, we're nowhere close. That's when you call a timeout and you say, all right, we're going to set this up this way. We're going to execute this play. We're going to try to shoot with five seconds left. If we miss, try for the offensive rebound. If they get the rebound, you foul. Then you come back down. you got four seconds left, three seconds left to, to get what you need, two or a three. And then you then you go from there. That's the way it should have gone. It didn't go that way. You lost the playoff game because of it, and that sucks. Let's get to the Harden shot because that was – something that uh, was also a mistake. And we'll do that in just a second. First, today's show is brought to you by Prize Picks, And Prize Picks has a special offer, a million dollar daily super flex. Every day during the playoffs and the finals, one of you Prize Picks users gets a chance to become a millionaire. All you need to do is place an entry after 8 a.m. Eastern time. Up one entry will be selected at random. Whoever placed that entry will be given a six-pick flex the following payouts. Six correct picks, you're a millionaire. Five correct picks, $80,000. Four correct picks, $16,000. Go to prizepicks.com slash million. Prizepicks.com slash million. You got to opt in at that link to be eligible for the million-dollar entry once you opt in. Just play the game like normal, and you could be the lucky winner. How do you play it like normal? You pick two to six players. Price picks sets a projection. If you go over if, or you know more or less, you know, and you nail it, you win. You can win up to 20, 25 times your money on any, any entry. All the sports that you watch are available. And if you're a first time user, you get 100% instant deposit match up to $100. If you use the promo code locked on, so you go to pricepicks.com slash locked on, you sign up, you deposit up to $100, they will give you whatever that number is up to $100. And then you go to the pricepicks.com slash million. You sign up for that, and who knows? You could be a millionaire. But it's at prizepicks.com. you got to use the promo code Locked On. I want to thank you for making Locked On Celtics your first listen every day. Uh, come back tomorrow. I'll dive deeper into this. i got to get back home and uh, get ready for Game 5 myself. And in, the, in that time, we will have a, a, another podcast for you. Uh, James Harden. Hey, credit to James Harden. 42 points. The Celtics again. They, you know, they they weren't up in his uh, airspace. Forty-two points, eight rebounds, nine assists. It wasn't quite as bad as Game One, as far as letting him walk into shots. He he hit some really tough ones. Uh, I thought uh, they, they did a good job of getting Jalen Brown off of Harden. I thought they they did a good job of trying to dictate that matchup and and that worked out well now Harden was feeling it at that point before he got that last shot he was five of eight from three so he's feeling it he's very clearly at that point he's got 39 points you know you don't want to leave James Harden you just don't want to leave James Harden you don't want to leave him from three Celtics are up two Jason Tatum after the game says we didn't want to give up a three-pointer. We knew we were up two. We would live with Joel Embiid making a two-pointer. That would change the entire dynamic of the final play because at that point, you do milk the clock down. At that point, you do. And it's almost like the Celtics kind of went into uh, tie game mode at the end of the clock versus your down one mode. If you, were, if you were tie game mode, yeah, milk the clock all the way down. Don't give them a chance. Don't give, some, don't give the opportunity for something stupid. You take the last shot. If it goes in, it goes in. If it doesn't, you go into overtime, overtime number two, and you say to yourself, Joel Embiid has played 46 minutes. If you, 
I'm fine with it going into a second overtime. Honestly, James Harden played 48 minutes. Joel Embiid, Joel Embiid played 46. You think they had another five minutes left in those in those legs? No. But Jalen Brown, who to his credit after the game said it was a bad read, took full accountability and all of that. But he said after the game uh, that he it, it was he shouldn't have done that. I <laughs> should not have left. The oh man, did I just realize that my oh well. Sorry for the bad audio. I just realized that my uh, my audio setting, for some reason, I decided to check midstream. My audio setting uh, decided to change itself, even though it's the same damn audio setting. Sorry. Half this podcast sounded like it came off my camera, and I'm sure right now it sounds like it's coming off of my my microphone. I apologize for that. Lost my train of thought as well, but I got to keep going because it's late. And I'm going to keep going. You don't want to leave Harden. And and Jalen admitted that he shouldn't have done it. I understand the, the idea. There's Joel Embiid. This is the power of the paint touch. This is why, that play is why I'm, everybody is obsessed with getting the ball in the paint. Got to get the paint touches because... Players cannot resist helping. And Jalen, knowing that he was unhardened, Jalen, knowing that he was uh, potentially giving up a three-point shot, he saw Joel Embiid backing down, backing down. And I think he saw, okay, this guy's going to score. This guy is going to try to score. He's not passing. I'm going to go in there and try to see if I can get this steal and make this stop. Because what's the worst thing that could happen? I foul him. Okay, he gets two free throws and he ties the game. He might have made that shot anyway. But I'm going to go make a play, see if I can't get a steal and end this thing. I can see somebody saying that. I can see him saying that. But it's the wrong play. That help should have come from somebody else if it was coming at all. Now, I don't know if the Celtics maybe over overthought it a little bit. Because it started out with Marcus Smart on Embiid. And maybe they said, all right, Marcus can can defend Embiid. We're going to switch. So the, the way that it's set up, maybe they were expecting something different and thought maybe Horford would switch on to Embiid, but it ended up being Tatum. All right, fine. You know what? Tatum's you know not as big as Embiid, but he's a strong guy. He's got a good base. He can handle it. Uh, he's long. He can bother a shot. Not the worst thing in the world. It's not your preferred matchup, but hey, a possession of Tatum on Embiid. Let's roll with it. Let's see. Maybe somebody comes over at the last second. Al Horford comes over, who is great on Embiid. Maybe somebody blocks a shot at the last second. Maybe Robert Williams should have been in the game to kind of protect the rim a little bit more. Maybe that's maybe that was a counter. But regardless, uh, Starting out with Smart on Embiid, maybe, maybe uh, Missoula was thinking Embiid is gassed. We're going to try the guard on him. It's Marcus Smart, so he can he can hold his own. And if Embiid tries to dribble, Smart can maybe rip the ball, and, and that's where you make the big defensive play. I don't know why Horford wasn't on him. Joel Embiid, after the game, said he was expecting Horford on him. That was a tough, that was a tough possession. The Celtics showed, like, their – their flaws uh, in in the last thirty seconds of the game. They showed a lot of potential over the course of the game, the the fourth quarter, and that's why Al Horford was so encouraged. But Jalen, for all of the stuff that he did well, and he was the reason, the number one reason why they were uh, so good or, or so close early on. Uh, he was the number one reason why they. Even though they played terribly, they were still only down nine at the half. You got to remember, this should have been a 20 point game. The Sixers absolutely should have been up 20 at some point in this game. They, they did have a 16 point lead. Uh, there was that one embarrassing touchdown pass that Harden threw over the top of Horford and Brown, where th- that was just that was just gross. And Embiid caught it and scored with like no resistance. The Celtics actually came back and, and got a, a 10-3 run there. 
but the the Celtics were were bad in the first quarter, especially. The fact that they were even close at the half is, was amazing, and but even with the with the run that they made, some some real big mistakes that cost them, and you just don't want to be. I I want to give the Sixers proper credit because Embiid was playing really really well, and and Harden was playing really really well, and those two guys combined for seventy six points, and and that's. <laughs> That's just a, a wild number. No one else. Oh, wait. Tyrese Maxey scored 14. That's, you know, that's a lot of points. <laughs> I'm sorry. 76 points is a lot of points for two guys to score. Um, the fact that the Celtics were, were close says a lot, but the, the, the end of the game there, Jalen's, Jalen's mistake and then that final play, just too much to overcome. You can't you can't be making those kinds of mistakes. Uh, let's let's talk about why Al Horford was encouraged. Uh, first, I want to say thank you again for making Lockdown Celtics your first listen. Uh, check out the Lockdown NBA podcast. I'm not going to be hosting this week because the game's on Tuesday. We record Tuesday nights for the Wednesday podcast, but check them out. I normally host on Wednesdays with Jake Madison, so check that out. All right, uh, Al Horford after the game said he was pretty encouraged, and I got to say, like the mood. Jalen Brown was not in a good mood. Um, I think he he took – obviously, he made the mistake, the defensive mistake. So, you know, we walked into the locker room, and he's sitting there in the corner, and he's basically staring off into space, and he's you know probably running through things in his head. He messed up that defensive play. He messed up. He still almost got back out to challenge Harden, but he messed up. And he, he was probably taking that really hard. He didn't get – he got three shots in the fourth quarter, zero shots in overtime, probably thinking about that. That can't happen. That can't happen. The Celtics cannot get away from Jalen Brown. Sorry, I said that earlier, but I'm going to say it again with my audio being better. They cannot get away from Jalen Brown. So he was in a bad mood, but Tatum didn't seem like he was in that bad of a mood. Smart didn't seem like he was in that bad of a mood. And, and Horford seemed – outright encouraged he said he was encouraged he said that this team showed a lot of things that they didn't show all season long so he came out of that like i feel like al horford's coming out of this game saying hey you know what we lost tough loss it sucks moving on to game five we'll just take game five and then we'll come back here and we'll win game six i said celtics in six anyway so maybe that's what it's going to be but horford's like yeah, man, let's just go back and win game five. Let's just go do it. I trust, If there's one guy on this team that I do trust, it's, it's Horford, who, again, had a monster fourth quarter. The Celtics' defense in the fourth quarter was so good, so good. I mean, it was really amazing to watch, and Horford especially. Embiid was gassed, and that played a part of in it, but that was a, um, that was a, a master class down the stretch. Uh, until the last 30 seconds they were they're just incredible now they the Celtics did have opportunities that they missed uh they had a five point lead with two minutes to go in the fourth quarter they gave up an offensive rebound and the three point play to PJ Tucker uh Horford blocked Embiid Maxi came in for the loose ball to set up the uh that game tying shot uh, uh yeah a game tying shot at the end that was before uh Marcus Smart missed a wide open three pointer at the end of regulation. That was as clean a look as you're going to get. That one didn't fall. Uh, Joel Embiid, they you know exhausted. They forced him to take a fadeaway three pointer uh, in overtime. Uh, that got out to Tobias Harris, uh, who kept it alive, and it got to James Harden. James Harden missed the three. So you got a fadeaway three from Embiid that misses, a three-pointer from Harden that misses, all in the same possession. And the Celtics couldn't secure the rebound. Embiid got a bucket. Then they could have gone from, that was 112, that was 112-109, up three. They could have had the ball up three with a minute and a half to go, and instead Embiid gets the bucket. Go down the other end of the floor, Al Horford misses a wide-open corner three-pointer. Could have put them up at that point. Could have put them up four. Missed shots, missed opportunities. Don't get the don't secure these offensive rebounds. That's 
the Celtics had their chances to win this game. And so I don't know, maybe that's why that's maybe why uh, Horford is encouraged. You got to look at this series. Sixers win game one, and they were there was a 45 point game from Harden. They played great, and the Celtics had a chance at the end. They the Sixers win game four. They have 42 points from Harden, 34 from Embiid, and the Celtics had a chance at the end. They had the ball. They they were a defensive miscue away from that Harden shot never being taken. Now, who knows what happens after that? Maybe maybe Joel Embiid takes the shot, misses, and they get an offensive rebound. And, and I'm not going to say the Celtics would have won the game if Jalen stayed home. I have no idea. But the Celtics, even with all of this, if they get that stop or even if Embiid hits the shot and they go back and it's a tie game, Worst thing that happens, realistically speaking, is they go into a second overtime. And I like Boston's chances in a second overtime, like I said, with Embiid playing 46 minutes. I can't imagine him playing 51 minutes, how he would have been. So the Celtics' two wins were definitely easier. And the Sixers' two wins were squeak them out. Celtics had a chance at the end, and they kind of blew it. Is that encouraging? I don't know. In a way, yes, because if the Celtics play well, if the Celtics just played well from the beginning, if Jason Tatum played well from the beginning, he had 24 points, 22 in the second half. If he had just done that, played that way from the beginning, this would have been an easy, this would have been an easy win. You know? So I guess that's encouraging. But you can't the other side of it is you can't give a team like the Sixers chances. You can't give them life. Because they'll win. They'll beat you. I mean, I talk a lot of crap about the Sixers, but they're the third seed for a reason. They got the MVP who's putting up 34 points on a knee that he shouldn't even be playing on. You know, Harden's finding himself. Hey, you know what? I I have to shout out. I really do have to shout out James Harden. I said millions of times that uh, this Harden would have been, uh, I thought Harden would have been at the, uh, at the club, I thought Harden would have strolled in uh, after a night out, gotten to warm ups, and then punted this game. I just felt like Harden was was kind of done and checked out. He came in, he played great. So, you know, egg on my face. So good for him. But the Celtics can't let these things happen. They the Celtics have to be stronger, more forceful. They can't. They can't. They can't have those stretches where whole halves where. Guys are, are are nowhere. Tatum is, is is passive like he was. Can't do it. Can't do it. Now, I do think the Celtics are going to win game five. I do think they're going to come back and win game five. And then game six, you know, I, I don't think the Celtics want to play a game seven, so I think I think they can win the next two games. And there's your Celtics in six. I, I feel good about that still. But I'll have to watch this game again and watch over some of these, these key plays and, and kind of go through some of this other stuff. It definitely was a wasted opportunity. I definitely feel like it was a wasted opportunity. The Celtics could have come out of here with three straight wins. They could have stolen this game, and that would have just ruined ruined Philadelphia for a long time. But they didn't. And now, look, 2-2, it's a fight. Now you've, now you've set yourself up for a bad game from somebody. Jalen has a bad game. Maybe somebody's pissed off. Maybe somebody's sick. Maybe somebody sprains an ankle. You've now set yourself up for weirdness again second straight series weirdness can can uh can come up to bite them so we'll talk about it more it's obviously going to have to be uh be here all week i'll be back in philly next what is it thursday is the game so boston tuesday philly thursday i'll be back here and i'll have podcasts for you throughout the week so make sure you subscribe wherever you get your podcasts get onto that youtube page watch the video comment top in the comment section fight with the sixers fans because they will be in there in droves I want to thank you for listening, thank you for watching, and thank you for sharing the podcast. Tell your friends, tell everybody to listen to and watch the Lockdown Celtics podcast right here on the Lockdown Podcast Network, your team every day.